Okay, shall we start? Okay, we shall, we shall start. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar on introduction to functional safety. So before we get into the major topic, let's see what is the purpose of creating this ISO 26262 document standard. So if the ISO is creating some kind of standard, there must be some kind of problem they have face. So to overcome those problems, the ISO has created some kind of standard to solve those problems. So let's see what was the problem it was faced. Okay. So, all the companies are creating the product, correct? So, it may be a software product or a hardware product or a applications or websites. So, every company is creating their own product. So, if we are going to create some kind of product, the product will be associated with some risk as well as some safety features. Okay. So let's see what are the risks are associated while we are developing the product. Okay. For example, if we are going to make some online payment in a website, okay, so which the website does not have a secured layer, SSL layer. For example, if the website is having the address of HTTP, it's not including the secured layer. So will, will it be a safe payment? Definitely not, right? That means the product or the website which the company has created along with some risk 
the risk is not from the company side the risk is from the user side the user will not user should not make some payment in the particular website where your credit card information will be hacked over through that website so that some risk are associated with the particular website and similarly in our cars like uh, uh, take it as a 10 year before car there will be a, some interior light but there will not be a, any communication between the ecus for example in our days if, if you open any one of the door you could able to see the exact door which was opened in your dashboard correct whether it is a front right door or front left door or whether it is a rear right door or rear left door or even in trunk okay you could e easily understand that which door has been opened so that according to that you can try to close that door but assume that 10 years before even though the door is awfully locked okay until or otherwise the person seeing the door is, has been opened the passengers inside that would not able to identify the risk so the company has created a product which has some risk factors all the products which has some risk factors okay so now let's come back to the safety we will consider the same examples okay so you are going to make some payment in the website which has some ssl layer so that you could definitely do some kind of payment because it is a secure layer so you assure that my credit card information my payment will be safe the company is providing some kind of assurance like that you can easily make a payment over there and similarly if any one of the door has been opened in your car you could able to identify in your dashboard as well as your interior light so that you can able to close the doors and you can able to drive the car safely so this is what a product consists of a product consists of in both direction like it has numerous number of risk factors as well as the safety so our purpose is to mitigate the risk that means we need to reduce the risk as much as possible so that the users or consumer or passenger could be able to feel that they are purchasing the safe product okay so what is harm okay so if no safety is no safety is assured and some risks are associated with the product at the time some harm will be occurred okay if no safety is available and some risks are associated with the product the harm will be occurred for example if you are doing some kind of payment you may lose some kind some kind of money with the product which does not have some secured layer and if you are driving in a car which any one of the door has been opened there should be some harm could be happened if the door has been opened while you are driving the car so the harm will be occurred if there is no any safety measurements are made and there are more risk now you will see what is harmful to you okay so assume that i am driving a car and i have hit my car with another car okay. so what will happen the crash will be occurred and some kind of harm will be occurred correct but i have not mentioned whether i was driving a car in a highway with the speed of 100 km per hour or i am driving a car in my parking lot with 5 km per hour actually i have hit with another car but i have not mentioned where i hit it and with how much of speed i have hit this will replicate that how much of calm can be tolerated if i am hitting a car with my parking lot that can be tolerated just one scratch will be occurred with my car there can be tolerated but if you are hitting a car with another car with 100 km per hour what will be happen there will be like huge catastrophic damages will be occurred correct like the harm will be severe and how often you can be harmed for example if the risk or the product which you are going we have create uh, we are going to use if it is creating some kind of risk continuously more often 
then it has to be considered. For example, if the malfunction is happening often, there will be like more possibilities of harming it. So the risks are constantly not only for automotive industries, in all the fields, risks are associated. As I mentioned, if you are going to create any product or if you are going to do any activities also, not only for product, if you are going to do any activities, in that also some safety and risks are associated. In automotive, the maximum is the car will be hit with an, I mean, met with an accident. And if you are going to do some kind of uh, sports activities, you should have to make sure that you will be in a safe position. You should take some precautions if some any risk has been occurred. For example, while landing in the airplane, the pilot has to be make sure that all the safety measurements has to be done if any risk has occurred. For example, uh, due to some bad weather or a heavy fog or some um, uh, problem malfunctions in the electrical and electronic components, anything could be happened. But they should be prepared in a way that how to overcome those problems. For example, you have a thermal power plant, nuclear power plant in many of the places, correct? So if something goes wrong in the plant, what should be, what we have to should do in the first activity? How to reduce the harms? All these things should be considered. Even uh, if you are going to invest in some kind of share market, or if you are going to do it in intraday activities, there are also some risk will be associated. So in each and every product and each and every activity, there will be some risk are associated. So according to ISO 26262, 2018, and the first chapter, the cost 3.128. The definition of risk is combination of the probability of occurrence of harm and the severity of that harm. Okay, so the combination of probability of occurrence is probability of occurrence in a mean that how often your ECU or any other electrical and electronic components is getting failure. Okay, so based upon the failure of the E and E components, there will be some harm to the passengers. And also based upon the situations, the severity also will be happened. So we can able to define in a way that risk is also associated with the functions of occurrence and as well as the severity. Now, what is risk? Okay. So, the company has to design and develop a safe system that are safe enough. So, that are safe enough in a mean that, so whenever you are creating some kind of ECU, you have to create in all the perspective of in failure mode. For example, if your, if your product is getting into the testing mode, what they will do instead of Actually, the actual intention of testing is to find the bugs. Correct. The actual intention of testing team is to find the bug as much as possible so that your product will be in safer hand. So the company has to design and develop safe system that are safe enough. We have to think in all the perspective. So when, if anything goes wrong, how we are going to overcome that problem and how we are going to reduce that problem and how we are going to avoid it, how we are going to prevent it. In all the perspective, the company has to think. Okay. So a perfect safe system does not exist due to complexity, cost, effort, and time to market. So what do you mean by perfect safe system? A perfect safe system does not exist. Why? Because a perfect safe system, because due to some more complexity because as i said before right if you're if you're going to see with some kind of car with uh, uh, 10 years ago maximum all the components will be in 
mechanical mode correct so there will be some electrical and mechanical mode so there you can able to find very little number of issues like uh, 10 to 20 so there will not be more complex so if you are increasing the complexity of the product if you are increasing the count of the ecus then the harm the possibilities of harm will be increases so that's why the perfect safe system does not exist due to complexity because as you are adding more and more ECUs and more and more codes and all those things, there will be a lot of possibilities. The malfunction will be happened in either in a hardware or software or system or anything had be happened because you have increased your complexity levels. And now the target, what is the target? The target is to identify the risk that cannot be tolerated. Okay, sometimes the risk can be occurred where that can be to tolerated means you can able to accept that harm what has been happened. Okay, for example, a, a small minor injuries, okay, that can be tolerated. But if a very major risk has been associated with the product, that cannot be tolerated. And also then unreasonable. And if it is happened, we need to find the ways to mitigate them. Mitigate means to make severe less. Okay, So we have to reduce the severity of the risk. And risks caused by failure of electric and electronic systems. Okay, So in our car, in the modern cars, you can able to see 60 to 80 ECUs are associated in the things. So where all the ECUs are connected to each other and a lot of data are transferring in between that, if any one of the fault is occurred in any one of the ECU, it will be reflected in others also. There, there will be a lot of risks are associated with this. So safety is always connected more or less with the system or the collection of systems. Okay, so as we are adding more and more ECUs in our automotive field, even if any one of the failures occurred in one ECU, it will be reflected in other things also. So the safety is always connected with this collection of system. So we have to make sure that all the testing has to be done with the unit testing as well as the integration testing so that if whatever the result you are obtaining in your unit testing you cannot be able to expect the same thing will be happened if you are going to do it with the integration testing right so because you are going to combine some kind of issues and the functionalities so that they they will react in some other way so that at the time also you need to find out some bugs to fix accordingly so creating a perfect system or creating a perfect product is always not possible where we are adding more and more complexities it is not possible and maximum we can able to create a product with more than 99.99 percentage we can able to create but 100 percentage is, is a perfect product it is always not possible that you need to understand and a system can be considered safe if it is a system that does not have unreasonable risk. Okay, so if you are considering a system is safe, that should not have unreasonable risk. So what is this unreasonable risk? The malfunctioning behavior of electrical or electronic systems. Okay, so assume that you are driving a car. Okay, some accident has been happened. Okay, the first thing the police officer will inquire it, how it was happened. Okay, whether it, it is happened due to that human error or some A and D error. Okay, if it is a human error, then not, not, not a problem. Like there is no any malfunction in the E and D system. Actually, the error has been occurred, the accident has been occurred due to the human error. Okay, so then the system will be considered as a safe because the, there is no any part in the accident because of the E and E. The accident has been occurred only because of the human. So at the time, we can able to consider that the system is safe. Okay, if 
there is some happening, if there is some malfunction in the electrical and electronic system, then we should not consider that the system is a safe. Because it is creating some problem, it is creating some harmful to the system, so that we cannot able to consider the system is a safe system. So, a vehicle should be safe in all the scenarios for which it was designed. So, which must happen during its lifetime. So, if a person is going to buy some car and he is going to use that some car, at least, at least minimum to 5 to 10 years. Correct. So, the user has to make sure that during these 10 years, okay, that is should not be any malfunction has to be happened in his E and E systems. Correct. So when if you are creating some product or if you are going to deliver some car, at the delivery of the time, all the easy E and E systems will be like it will be in new. Okay. So coming into the market and based upon the user's usage, whether he is going to use uh, and he is going to drive a hundred every day 50 kilometer or 100 kilometer 1000 kilometer it depends upon the scenarios okay so whatever the user is expecting is whatever the systems e and e systems inside the car that should not that should not meet any malfunctions during the lifetime okay so the system has to pass through various testing before coming into the production like it has to meet field testing Functional testing, integration testing, unit testing, system system testing. So by passing all the all these testing, the company will identify that in which field or in which area the uh, risk has associated with that. Whether it has been associated with any one of the issue, and they will go and find and rectify all those problems. And once again, they will do all the testing and will come for the production. Okay, so the vehicle should be safe. That is designed in a way that it should be happened throughout the lifetime, not for very short time, like one or two years. The system should always to be functional according to the requirements. Okay, so now we we would have understand that if we are going to create any product, there will be some risk and the safeties are associated okay so now we will see what are the types of safety so there are majorly three types of safeties are available the first one is passive active and preventive okay. so so the our first thing is what is passive safety Okay, the passive safety will protect human beings once a crash happens. For example, airbag. So the functionalities of airbag is to protect human beings once the crash has been occurred. Could you able to see the airbag will release within a 170 milliseconds. And in between that, it has to check the various parameters like it has to check the sensors and whether the seatbelt has been worn and whether the minimum speed is reached everything it has to be checked so based upon that the airbag will be released so this type of safety we will consider as a passive safety and another example for the passive safety is e call so e call will be functioning and based upon that the accident has been once the accident has been occurred and there is some collision has been happened there will be some kind of buttons or switches which is available in the dashboard or near to the dashboard which the driver has to press that button so that the emergency call will be happened so that whichever the service stations are near to that particular location, including that latitude and longitude, the information will be provided to that nearest service stations. So that 
the once the emergency has been occurred all the all the uh, precautions and all those things will be provided for this vehicle you are able to see some sos buttons are available so once you, once you press this switch the emergency call will be occurred and the nearest service stations people will come and help you for that and the next type of safety is active safety so what is this active safety it helps to prevent a crash okay so the previous thing is once the crash has been occurred those functionalities will start working okay so coming into the active safety it will start working before the crash i mean it will prevent the crash can i able to see that so with it like this process is like without esp electronic stability control see the system is designed in a way that where the esp feature is not available for that particular car so you could able to see some kind of unstable while the driver is turning into the car but this car has the esp facilities where you could able to see the car the flowing in a correct way that there is no any unstable in the driving okay. so the next example is abs anti braking systems so first we will see an example without abs and how the the car will react when the car does not have the abs features see here so the car is driving in a speed of 70 km per hour once the driver applied the brake it is losing its control correct where the abs features are not available and now the same thing when the car has the abs features how it is going to react be able to see with the same speed right so he's applying the brake and you could not able to see any shake or any movement and it is not passing to the any other lane correct so these are some examples of active safety and coming into the next type of safety is that preventive so what is this pre preventive safety is that it will help the driver avoid the situation where crashes could occur okay so wherever the possibilities of crash will be happened at the time this kind of preventive preventive safeties will be applicable okay so one of the example is autonomous parking okay so if you want to western countries like the parking the car in like public places it, it is a very big uh, thing right so they have introduced some kind of autonomous parking where the driver has set the destination path destination place where the car has to be parked okay so now the car is driving itself okay and it is moving into the position moving into the place where it has to be parked can you able to see all the uh, steering control accelerator is um, everything is working and it is moving to the particular destination where it was selected and you could able to see okay so whichever the destination the selected by the driver the car has reached that destination by using the autonomous parking so the another uh, example of preventive safety is that driver drowsiness warning drowsiness and attention warning okay. so it uses sensors to continuously monitor the driver performance even if the driver is moving out of the lane or as well as the steering control everything is monitored by the sensors 
and as well as it is monitoring his face especially the eyes whether to detect any uh, the driver is feeling any drowsy or not if it is going to detect some kind of drowsiness in the driver it is providing some kind of sounds or alarms to indicate the driver that you need to make some kind of alert or you need some kind of brake because you are driving in a car in a drowsy okay so these are some examples of safety okay passive safety active safety and preventive safety okay so we have discussed about the passive safety passive safety right so the passive safety will react as early as possible be between the time period of 10 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds so whenever the crash has been occurred this passive safety will be implemented for example releasing the airbag so the time is very very important during the passive safeties and coming into the active safety it will prevent the crash right so it may take within the time period of 5 uh, 100 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds and as well as for the preventive safety it is less than 2 seconds so all the features what we have discussed like uh, electronic stability control abs or airbag or driver drowsiness all these features will be implemented and will be activated within the respective timelines so that it will prevent the harm correct so this is the purpose of creating the safety okay so now what we are going to do we are going to discuss up two uh, uh, case studies so the first one is like boeing 737 max 8 and the another case study is takata airbag recalls so the first case study is boeing 737 max 8 okay so in the auto uh, airline industry okay so the main uh, major two competitors are airbus and boeing okay so these are the two major airlines in the world which are manufacturing the airline and providing to the countries okay and if any two competitors will be there definitely there will be some kind of rivalry and some kind of competitions in uh, revenues will be happen right and similarly these companies are uh, started fighting for who is going to make the more profit and as a result there there was an accident has happened to the boeing 737 max 8 because of it is trying to it is trying to do some kind of modification in the airplane which causes the death of 157 people which was happened in march 10 2019 and the airline is ethiopian airline and the flight number 302 okay. so actually what was happened the airbus which uplifted some engines to the airplane okay so this is the airbus flight correct so this airbus has uplifted some engine parts and based upon that he has uh, could able to do some kind of fuel efficiencies okay so for, for the fuel efficiencies they have do some kind of modifications in the engine okay the, just they have uplifted the engine from the ground okay and once it has been done okay so most of the pilots who are handling the boeing boeing 737 max 8 they have reported that while we are taking off there is too much of nose down is happening okay so that means you can able to see this picture right so if we are going to take the flight uh, take off the flight the nose down should be in the like in the minimum level okay uh, at least it has to be mentioned correct but 
after doing some kind of modification in the engine the nose down that means the go the flight is taking off in a some other uh, like uh, angles okay that is too much of nose down that means it is going very in a vertical way okay so what they have done why it, it was happened instead of re engineering they have installed some softwares to reduce the problem okay so already some pilot has told that there is some problem after we have uh, uh, uplifted the engine okay so after uplifted the engine means the whole re engineering has to be done from the basics from the basics the re engineering refers to whatever the thing you are doing from the beginning that has to be done that is re engineering so what they have done instead of re engineering to to reduce this problem okay they have just installed some softwares okay so that software they will call it as a manwaring characteristics augmentation system they have installed some softwares okay and they have installed some softwares and after installing this software now after installing after updating the engines all those things the company does not provide any extensive additional training to the pilots any additional training to the pilots after the modification and also in the training material they did not mention about this mcas software they did not mention about this mcas software so what was the thing happened this flight met with an accident because of the reengineering has been not done instead of instead of that they have just installed some software to overcome this problem okay so this was happened in in 2019 okay so let's come into the second use case the takata airbag recalls okay so takata is a uh, japan company which is uh, uh, supplying the airbags to the major uh, automobile companies okay so what was the problem was that there was some long term exposure to high heat and humidity can cause these airbag to explode when deployed so due to this reason okay so whenever the airbag has to be deployed it is exploded okay so such explosions have caused injuries and death so instead of saving the people what it has done it is exploded and it has caused some injuries and death so the clients are like toyota honda mazda bmw nissan all the major automobile companies are the client for this takata and a total of 67 million airbags have been recalled okay and at the end of the 2022 11 millions were still had to be replaced so once the uh, once the malfunction has been occurred i mean the identified the takata company has recalled all the cars correct recalled all the cars to fix those problems see the count 67 millions okay so at the end of 2022 still 11 millions are yet to be replaced so what is the problem in the automobile industry is, is that so in the previous case we have seen that boeing 737 right okay boeing 737 so if if any malfunction is happening in this particular flight we can able to fix it we can able to identify and we can able to track that flight correct so where is this uh, plane is currently at but you can able to see after the product is coming into the market and after releasing you cannot able to track all the 67 million cars correct so it is a very huge process and as well as a very huge uh, uh, the malfunction has been occurred which was de defaming the company and as well as it is providing some injuries and death to the people okay so from these two cases i mean from the boeing 737 max 8 what we have learned the change management has not been done the change management has not been done in the 
use case because whatever the change you are doing in your product, you need to re-engineering from the beginning. But the change in management has not been followed. And coming into the Takata airbag recall, they have produced some flawed quality control product. In the result, there are some injuries and death and there is a very long process of recalling 67 million vehicles. Okay, so these are some problems which were occurring in the industries, in the automobile as well as the air, air spaces and all those things. To overcome these problems, okay, so the ISO 26262 as a standard was created to give some kind of in, uh, protocols or information loss, anything you can be considered. Okay, so to follow the procedures and standards and you need to do the re-engineering for the product. Okay, so, so far we have discussed about a product. Each and every product has a safety and risk. Okay, so we have discussed some couple of use cases also. Okay, so now coming into the standard, this ISO 26262 series of standard is the adoption of IEC, 61508 series of standard. So what is this standard is used for? It will address sector specific need of E and D system within road vehicles. Okay, so especially in cars, this E and D systems. Okay, so safety related system comprised of electrical, electronic and software components. This will guide you how to develop the E and D systems. Okay, this is this will guide you how you are going to develop the systems. So, safety is the main key issue in the developing of road vehicles. So, as I said before, right? So, the, in your car, you can have more than sixty to eighty ECUs. So, all the ECUs have uh, has been developed in a way that it has to make sure that all the products are in safety. Okay, so that is the main purpose of this ISO. Okay. So, the development and integration of automotive functionalities strengthen the need for functional safety because you can able to see each and every day there will be some development and integration are happening in the automotive industries, right? So, it is increasing the ECU count to add more functionalities as well as it is adding more complexity also. So, Increasing risk from the systematic failures and random hardware failures because of increasing technological complexity and as well as the software content. We are we need to write a lot of software to make that happen. So as well as the mechatronic implementations. So to mitigate these risk by providing appropriate requirement and process. So the requirement is the uh, main thing. Okay, so whenever you are going to develop some kind of project. Our pro, sorry, our product. You need to write a very brief requirement so that everyone in the team able to understand what is the exact requirement, and if any risk is associated with the product, how we are going to mitigate them. All those things will be mentioned in your documentation. So by using this ISO, what can be achieved? It will provide a reference for the automotive safety life cycles and supports the tailoring of the activities to be performed during the life cycle phases. So you need to pass through a lot of life cycles before we are getting into the production stage. And it provides an automotive specific risk-based approach to determine integrity levels. Let's, we'll call it as a ASIL. That is automotive safety integrity levels. So we need to specifically provide that. And using these ASILs to specify which of the requirement of ISO 2622 are applicable to avoid unreasonable residual risk. So if you are going to for the production of the product, okay, before that you need to determine some ASILs. So based upon that, you need to re-engineering or you need to redevelop so that you can able to avoid the unreasonable residual risks. 
and also it provides requirement for the functional safety management design implementation verification and validation and confirmation measures so throughout the, our v model it also provides the required informations and also it provides requirements for relation between the customers and suppliers so this is the iso 262 standards of series of standards so there are 12 parts are available so in the first part you could able to see the vocabulary in the sense that each and every term what is the exact meaning according to iso 262 so the second part is consist of management of functional safety and how the overall safety management will be occurred and how it is going to completed it and in the concept phase it consist of item definition so the item definition so whatever the thing you are going to do or whatever the thing you are going to use it in your product you need to mention in a separate item so you need to provide a very brief definition for that item and also it provides the hazard analysis and risk assessment hara and they are broadly classified in the product development at the system level hardware level and software level and it is uh, providing the productions operation service and decommissioning also okay so this is an overview of iso 26262 26. so now coming into the definition of functional safety what is functional safety with the absence of unreasonable risk due to hazards caused by malfunctioning behavior of ene systems okay so the absence in the reference and that should not be happened that, that should not be happened unreasonable risk that is unreasonable risk should not be happened because of malfunctioning behavior of end systems when the end system is failure to occur some functional i mean failure to do some kind of functionalities it should not be happened okay so let's see what is this unreasonable risk so unreasonable refers to unacceptable or unjustified or unwarranted okay that is unreasonable risk for example you are uh, waiting in the signals right you are driving a car and you are waiting in the signals you can able to see some kind of unintended acceleration what will be happened okay some whatever the vehicle in front of you you can able to go and hit that or if any people are moving around in front of your car in the zebra line there will be some severe harm to that people also like right? that is unreasonable and the meaning of risk we can able to consider as a danger or threat or fear okay so the unreasonable risk refers to judged to be unacceptable in a certain context according to valid societal moral concepts so if we are doing some kind of activities in the signals and that will not be like Uh, like reasonable risk right that is a unreasonable risk if you are going and hitting in the car in front of you in the traffic signal due to some kind of unintended acceleration it is an unreasonable no. risk okay so the hazard refers to the potential source of harm caused by the malfunctioning behavior of the item okay so when there is some malfunctioning behavior in the end systems it is providing some kind of harm that we will call it as a hazard and malfunctioning behavior that is refers to failure or unintended behavior of the item with respect to its design intent okay so what is failure failure in a sense means the purpose of interior light you can consider as interior light the interior light was designed in the intent to whenever the door has been opened or trunk has been opened the interior light has to be turned on okay so what happen if that the interior light is not glowing even after opening the door that means some malfunction is happening in that particular ead systems that we'll call it as a malfunctioning behavior 
and unintended behavior means instead of doing that particular activity it is doing in some other activity when i am not supposed to accelerate it is going to accelerate that that we will call it as an unintended behavior so those kind of behavior we will call it as a malfunctioning behavior now coming into the e and e systems okay so e and e refers to electrical or electronic system electrical or electronic system that consists of electrical or electronic elements including programmable electronic elements okay so these definitions are mentioned in our iso 26262 so what is as or what is what is small functioning behavior e and e system everything is mentioned in our iso 26262 okay so there are some examples of small functions for example seat belt malfunction so whenever we are not wearing the seat belt the seat belt alarm has to be turned on correct but if it is not working there will be some malfunction in the seat belt so airbag defect that means whenever the airbag is supposed to be opened supposed to be released if it is not releasing then there will be some airbag defects tire defects okay so if you could able to see some kind of sensors in the tires whether what is the pressure of the tire right what is the air quantity of that if it is not providing any data or if it is providing some kind of wrong data it then it will be considered as a tire defects and brake malfunctions that is when you are applying some kind of pressure to the brake it has to be supposed to be working right if it is not working then we will call it as a brake malfunctions and emergency brake failure so when we are going to apply the emergency brake it has to be supposed to be stopped if it is not stopping then we will call it consider as a emergency brake failure then warning horn failure uh, turn signal or brake light failure all those things we will consider as a malfunction so malfunction is, is refers to whenever when whatever thing you are trying to achieve with that particular system if it is not working okay then we will call it as a malfunction okay so these are some examples of malfunctions okay. so now we'll see what is this potential risk so how do we determine the potential risk of the vehicle functions due to malfunctioning behavior okay so you have you have understand what is malfunction some error has occurred. in a simple terms if i want to tell in simple terms some errors some error has been occurred in the end systems okay so based upon the error of end system because of that some accident has been occurred some potential risk i mean some accident has been occurred how to determine the risk for that the iso 26262 provide a standardized method to determine the potential risk what is the potential risk has been occurred for failure of e and e systems okay how we are going to achieve that by using the automotive safety integrity levels use this is we will call it as a risk classification system risk classification system in short form we will call it as a asil you could able to see lot of features are available in the car right like uh, headlight field, uh, headlights uh, radar cruise control electric power steering anti lock braking airbag instrument cluster all the features are available correct right? so each and everything are considered as an independent ecu it has its own functionalities what it tells is if any malfunction is happening for this particular ecu what will be your expected asil if engine management some unwanted acceleration will be happened correct if there is some malfunction in the engine what will happen some unwanted acceleration so instead of stopping the car the car is keep on moving that means it will come into the category of asil crd it will come into the category of asil crd i will explain about what is cd and all those things okay so headlight failure if there is some failure in the headlight what will happen the possibilities of hazard will be asil b 
So for every futures, for every ECU, if any malfunction is happening, what is the ACIL? That we will call it as a risk classification system. Okay. So according to ISO, there are four types of ACILs, A, B, C, D, and D is the highest degree of automotive hazard. Hazard means damage. D is the highest degree of automotive hazard. You can able to see here D. Why it is getting D? If there is some un un unwanted acceleration, there is like very, uh, like the hazard will be like severe. Correct. You can able to see the rear light failure. If the rear light is failure, there will not be any much hazard. Correct. The rear light will not be working. That's it. So that is what the, the acyl classifications. Okay. So how we are going to uh, get these acyl values? First, we have to identify the malfunction. Malfunction means that the system failure and hazard analysis. Okay, what unintended situation could occur? That we'll call it as a hazard analysis and risk analysis. That will be uh, occurred based upon the exposure, severity and controllability and acyl determinations. So what level of safety does the system need? That means risk reduction. How we are going to reduce the risk? How often can the malfunction occur? Okay, so based upon that, whether it can, comes under the A, B, C, D. D has the highest degree of automotive hazard. And A has the lowest. And these are some uh, classes of severity and the descriptions. Okay. So, if it is S0, there is no injuries, and S1, S2, and S3. And the classes of probability of exposure. Okay. So, if it is incredible, means it is not at all going to happen, and very low probability, and low probability, medium probability, and high probability. How prob probability means how often? I mean, you can able to think while you are designing the product, what are the probabilities will occur for this particular ECU and the classes of controllability. Okay. So as I mentioned in my beginning of the class, right? if I am going to hit the car, can I able to control? control? Like if I am driving in a car in a highway with 100 km per speed, I could not be able to control because based upon the uh, situation, right? If I am driving a car in a parking lot, with the speed of 5 km per hour, I can able to control. So based upon that, they have given like controllable in general. If I am driving in a parking lot, I can able to control. If I am driving in a highway, okay, that is difficult to control or uncontrollable. So based upon these classes, okay, the ACIL will be determined. As in a risk clarification system will be determined. Okay. It is like severity classes, exposure class, and con controllability classes. Okay, so if you are having A, okay, so when you will have the A, your severity will be S2, and your exposure class will be E4, and the controllability will have the C1, then you can have A. That is like minimum. Okay. So controllability means you can able to control at that time. You can able to control at the time. That means there will be no major harm will be occurred. Correct. Then coming into the D, you can refer this D where you have a S3, E4 as well as C3. Okay, let's see what is C3, S3 and E4. What is C3? Difficult to control. Difficult to control or uncontrollable. E4, high probability, there, there will be high probability of uh, chances of occurring this incident. And you can able to see the S3, life-threatening injuries, life-threatening injuries. So by combination of S3, E4, and the C3, what is the acyl you'll get? You'll get the D. That means if there is any malfunction is happening, then you will get the highest degree of hazards, acyl D. Okay, so this QM refers to 
quality management level this qm refers to quality management level that is that represent hazards that that not dictate any safety requirements if you are going to create any kind of uh, ecus or anything any module that module does not require any quality management okay that refers to qm okay so this is the overall safety management in which the item definitions will be mentioned and the overall safety management the objective is to ensure that the organization involved in the execution of safety life cycles okay so that is uh, that are responsible for safety life cycle or performing safety activities in the safety life, safety life cycles so to maintain a safety culture that supports and encourages the effective achievement of functional safety and promotes effective communication with other disciplines related to functional safety you can able to see that the item definition and impact analysis at the item level and it, it should be in the form of this way like and then, then also we have hara and also functional safety concept then confirmation measures are available so a lot of confirmation measures are available and all those things comes under the Uh, system level hardware level and the software level then everything is uh, in, in a good way then it will go for the release for protection okay so this is a way of uh, implementing the overall safety management in the organizations so i hope i would have uh, provide some kind of basic uh, information and understanding about the uh, the relation between the safety and risk and, and an overview of the iso 2662 uh, functional safety and i highly appreciated if you are asking some kind of questions or your feedback yeah uh, hi permal yes uh, this was a nice session actually uh, yeah so i have three questions in here uh, uh, so first question is very basic i mean what do you mean by item definition that's one part and okay. the second question is when you uh, distinguish the safety ratings uh, in terms of asl tell asl a to asl d then uh, what, what are you indicating is it like asl a uh, or qm should not be uh, having any safety software we don't have to press more safety uh, related goals into them and mm -hmm. if i mean uh, asl d is it like i have to um, uh, get more safety related features into it is that what it means that is second question and third uh, question is uh, when the vendor delivers safety um, safety compliant software to the oem or one of its clients then uh, is there any middleman who is going to give a certification on the vendor that whether this particular uh, safety uh, software is uh, following the safety goals or the who's iso ratings yeah okay These so okay so first coming into the item definition so the item definition is the initial process or a very basic process which has to be done in the first step so item definition refers to what are the hardware and software components you are going to include in your project for example if it is going to be a hardware what are the sensors actuators and all other components what you are going to include that you have to mention in your item definitions what over the software what over the thing what over the thing you are including in your project that has to be detailedly mentioned in your item definition that is your first thing the coming into the second question you are asking about some asil d so asil d you can able to see that asil d that the uh, risk clarification system will be provided to that particular ecu by asil d means if there is a severity classes of s3 and exposure class 3 e4 and controllability of c3 we will have the asil classification of d that means most dangerous so suppose if any client is requesting you to design or reengineering that particular ecu which you need to bring down to c then you need to consider and you need to do all the reengineering work to make that to bring down to c and coming into the quality management 
So for those particular uh, risk clarification system where the safety measurements are does not needed. There is no any safety measurements needed. Just you need to pro develop your product and hand over to the OEM. That's it. That's the no, second. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt in this part. But okay. uh, I was asking more towards like uh, if you mean SLD, that means I have to add more safety features in it. And uh, is there any ISO standards which defines that if I have the uh, accelerating SD, then I should have these uh, kind of uh, um, what's that uh, rules or uh, test cases or features? Yes, that uh, yes correct. You need to do more a uh, lot of works rigorous uh, implementation of the software. You mean in the software side? In the software side, correct. In the software side, you need to do a lot of things to make make sure that. Uh, the, even though the probability of uh, hazard is occurring, you need to mitigate them. You need to provide the, all the documents. Okay, got it. Okay, and coming to the last thing, we are asking about that safety compliance software or uh, some other thing, right? So, yeah, yeah, I can rephrase that. So I was asking, like, uh, uh, as a vendor, if, if example, I am a vendor and I am. Uh, uh, providing the client with uh, safety compliance software, okay. then who is going to examine it or audit it that I have passed all the FUSA? Uh, okay, respect. actually that can be done in a two way that whether the OEM has been, has appointed some kind of person from their end, okay, and we'll come and check all your audit reports and make sure that all the products you have designed in, in the standard of ISO 262, I mean from their end, OEM and Otherwise, we may be able to consider any third party people who is having a much knowledge about the FUSA and they can able to come and audit your things and they will provide the final uh, safety cases to the OEM. That will be mentioned while you are uh, beginning in the project itself. So the beginning in the project itself, you will have some kind of agreement with the OEM that what has to be done, everything will be in, in, mentioned in the agreement. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Thanks for that. So, just I got some messages in the chat. Okay, I will try to find out the question and I will try to answer them. How to qualify a developer um, software system as a SIL? A, B, C, D, what will be the differences? Okay, so in you could able to see this table, right? So, how to qualify a developer means? So there are some uh, uh, tools are available. Okay, so in which you need to provide all your information to that particular tool. There are so that the tool will be analyzed based upon your input, and it will provide your product comes under which this clarification system. Whether it comes A, B, C, D. Okay, so there are some softwares are available, and and coming into the second, are you planning safety analysis? at system and hardware level. Also planning of detailed introduction of, that means you're asking about the session, right? Okay. Yes, hello. Okay. Yes, Hi. yes. Hi. This yeah. is Ashlesha. Actually, I'm working as a function safety engineer, Okay. but uh, I need more info uh, information about safety analysis, like at uh, system level and hardware level. Okay. Uh, I'm basically working on software. So that's why I just wanted to have a glimpse of that. So is there any planning to have more sessions on safety? Yeah, sure. So there definitely we will try to conduct more sessions, especially mm -hmm. in functional safety and also in uh, uh, different things, right? You can able to see a lot of uh, phases are available in yes. system level, hardware, and we cannot be able to complete in a single session. It may take some yes. time to complete a, uh, particular things. So in future, we are planning to have some user sessions, especially for the hardware and software levels. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can you please give an example of ASIL class A, B, C, D? Okay, sure. So I, if I show this diagram, you could be able to understand what is this examples. Okay, so what is this actually ABCDR? If any malfunction is happening, what will be happened? Correct. No, don't make it as very complex or don't think it in an uh, automotive field. 
okay just as a normal human i will try to explain okay you are having lot of ecu if any ecu is failure what will be the danger to you okay i am talking in terms of simple terms okay if anything any ecu is getting failure what is the danger to you you can able to see here what is the plus a pointer you can able to see that rear light you, you can able to you can able to see that rear light right if there is some error in the rear light suppose rear light is not working okay rear light is not working what will be happen nothing will happen there will be no any damages very 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 limited number of damages you can able to see the hazard the hazard will be very very low because even though if your backlight is not rear light is not working there is no any damages will occur okay this is the example of acyl a coming into the engine management system if any damages or any sorry any errors are occurring in the engine level for example unwanted unwanted acceleration as i said one example right you are in you are in the traffic signal okay and and you are in the first in the traffic signal and you can able to see some kind of people are running uh, in the zebra line okay so if your car is doing some kind of un unwanted acceleration definitely you will go and hit that people right you will go and hit that people so if you are hitting that people okay so what is the damage will be happen very high right that is considered to be a very high so that's why each and every ecus have their own acyl they will determine what happened okay if that particular ecu has experienced some malfunctions that will give it in a risk classification system okay have you got it oh uh, yeah understood in addition to this um, uh -huh. if we see the um, egad system or the emission related okay it may not have direct impact on the human but on the environment okay so where it can be classified because it is so, not having impact directly on the human okay so but emissions are high okay so all these acyl classification will be provided by your oem okay so mm -hmm. they will provide you the uh, requirement i mean the project requirement along with the risk classification system that i want this ecu with the classification of a b c d or qm if your oem is providing the requirement of qm you no need to worry about any acyl classification if your oem is providing the same thing with the classification of acyl a you need to work out and you need to provide some kind of input to meet this acyl a that is all based upon your oem requirement okay but under yes. what criteria this emission related things will come because here will it come under acyl level or it is having some different safety level uh, in terms of uh, emissions okay that's uh, come under the uh, in uh, independent law based upon the where the country you are going to produce that particular automotive engine for example in european union they have some different kind of law if you are going to produce the car in the particular country correct there will be some kind of uh, emission controls will be there their system will be like different coming into the india their system will be uh, definitely independent correct so based upon the locations and based upon the country which support which applies some kind of law based upon that you need to develop you need to okay okay you need to develop a product which this iso is not only this uh, acyl class classification lot of things are available in the iso okay just in the introduction class i have mentioned this acyl classification but as i you said right if you are going to uh, create a, uh, a ecu which related to some kind of emission for that also we have some kind of standards in the iso okay so in in the future session we will try to cover all those things. okay okay thank you okay thank you
Yeah. So, okay, I think I think we can wind up the session. It's already stretched to fifteen minutes beyond the. Yes. Yes, Vishnu. Okay. Th thank you, participants, for your uh, patience and staying in our session. We will catch.